and good afternoon. I'm Deborah Blair Abram on assignment here at Lucas Cafeteria at the round table. My uh, co-host today is Sister Chaplain May Margaret Crosby. We love you guys. Stay tuned in. We've got a heavy schedule. We've got a lot of great things that we want to talk about. A lot of things that we need to touch bases on. But you know what we're going to do, don't you? Before we do anything, we got to pray first. So Sister uh, Chaplain Crosby will bring us, uh, uh, open us up in prayer. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Master, we come and giving you the glory and honor and the praise, and we thank you, God, for things as well as they are. We thank you, God, because you are mighty, uh, unstoppable, all uh, great. You are our Lord and King, our Savior, yes. our healer, our deliverer, and a mind regulator. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord, with all our heart, soul, mind, and body. And if anything we might have done or said that was displeasing, your eyesight, we ask you to forgive us right now and we repent right now and right Jesus. now, Jesus. Lord, we are very, very grateful for everything you've done for us and our family members and loved ones near and afar and our enemies Lord, in, the yes. name of in the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you the place. Now, today we're going to put supplications on the table today yes. for, for our nation, Lord, for our government, for our children, Lord. Hallelujah for the ones that are sick and shut in for our communities, Lord. We are reaching out in the name of Jesus yes. for your blood to cover and save and, and deliver and heal right now and provide for your people. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you the praise in this program. Hallelujah on assignment. With Deborah Blair Abram, hallelujah. Yes. We thank you for it right now. We thank you for what we're doing today and what we'll be doing in the future. Bless and sanctify everybody that comes in on yes. this line, Lord, yes. that comes in and, and the ones that are mentioned, a special blessing in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. I tell you, Sister May, Amen. that uh it wouldn't be any of us with this program if you all were out listening to That's us right. and uh, responding to what we're talking about, you know, uh, today and on the other programs as well. But before we go any further, I want to also let you know that we've got some tickets today for the fair. And I'm going to ask a question a little, a few minutes, in a few minutes, and ask you about that, um, ask you about something that happened here at the round table while we were on assignment. So we're giving away two free tickets today. But before we go any further, I also want to say that I am pro people, okay? And my daddy taught me, Mr. William Blair Jr., that first of all, we start at home. So I started home and I work abroad. But I want to say, uh, can, uh, I celebrate today Jan Kipper with the Jewish family. I also celebrate uh, National Hispanic Month with the uh, uh, Latinos, that we are all family, we are all one. So we have, we're gonna have to start doing things together in order for this country to, this country for us to start being, as God said, if my people were called by my name and humble themselves, seek my face, then he'll come and he'll heal the land. Yeah. And so that's what this program is all about, being on assignment. I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. Chaplain Crosby is on assignment. <laughs> You're on assignment. Uh, our co-producer, Casey Blair, is on assignment. And Amir Blair, his son, is on assignment. So we're just here today to encourage you that all is not lost, OK? So we thank you for being here today in the name of Jesus. And we're going to also have um, Shelby Alvarez out of San Antonio, Texas. He's going to come in today and tell us about their program that they have at uh, Restoration San Antonio Church. Um, that's actually my son's church of uh, May. Uh, Pastor Mark and uh, not Gloria Blair, their co-pastor and co-pastors at, at the church. So this ministry is all over the country. Another one of my sons has his church is also in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, which is saved by Grace Ministries. And so we are thankful for him. He's a great supporter 
uh, 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 Restoration Ministries, San Antonio Church, and vice versa. And they are, they go all over everywhere. But we just want to thank you again. Um, not to cut you short, but just because it was about the Lord, we're going to let you make it. But this weekend, this week, you cannot speak nothing for okay. Oklahoma when it's Texas <laughs> OU weekend. Hook them horns. <laughs> Is that right here, Doc? That's hook it. Them hook them horns. Them horns. <laughs> just because it was about the Lord, we're going to let you make it. Okay. <laughs> Big weekend. We got some hot topics that we want to... Uh, we want to talk about uh, that was a call coming through right then. One of our guests is going to be uh, Donna Mitchell, who is works with uh, young people um, on probation, and she's going to give us some tips on what we can do to try to work with our young people. Um, I talked to my son yesterday, Casey, uh, who's here today with us. And uh, we've got a big problem, and I know you guys know about it as well. And that big problem is, but before I go any further, this her name is Donna Mitchell. She's the she's national. On she's on her way. National Dropout Prevention Specialist, International Association for Truancy and Dropout Prevention President. She's a bad lady, and we thank God for her because she loves working with the people and some of you all may know her now she's a twin mm. uh donna gassaway and i forget mm. her sister's name but her dad and her uh her dad and their dad was the gassaway brothers mm -hmm. so you all may know them because they were yeah. some uh, uh pillows in the community and so we looking forward to talking to her and let her tell you a little bit more about that but before we go any further we had a guest last week here uh, for National Hispanic Month, and I'm not going to say their name, but I want you to tell me who that person was and tell me one question, one thing that she said about what she said in this program, and you got two tickets to the State Fair. Just give us a call here. What number do you want to call us at, Doc? 214-405-8335. Call us. Uh, also, what we also want to talk about is um, yesterday my son was telling me, we want, we're not going to give out any names, but we had a young lady that her parents did not know where she was for a few days. I think Doc said it. Mm. since last Thursday. Mm. Now, this has been really a, uh, I mean, this is just going on every day. There's so many parents right, right. now don't know where their children right. are, boys right. and right. girls. Right. 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 And so we got to find out what's going on. And I sent Doc a, um, a, a clip of someone. I don't do that. What is that called? Casey, I sent that from it's, from. it's a clip about what's going on in some of the homes. Mm -hmm. Now, grant you, I know we've had COVID. That's right. And, um, you know, COVID has been around for a long time. Children have been sure, out of school. I think sometimes some of the safest places for children now today is in the school, is at school when they go to school. So a lot of children were locked down with their parents. A lot of parents were locked down with their children. And my heart goes out to you about these things but uh if you need some help you know we don't have to do the things that are going on our children being abused and uh used i remember uh may margaret uh, Sister, uh chaplain mark crosby when i worked for the um, outreach program with farmers family health center i would see young people that would be out on the streets and some of the other uh Average people would tell me now watch these children at 12 o'clock they're going to change so what's happened is is that these children have been in foster homes and the foster homes that they've been in may and you guys these by the time these children turn 18 years old the people the foster parents are letting them just letting them go because they're not receiving any more money so the children are out on their own. Okay, so we want to know why our children don't care like they don't care. Now, I'm not talking about, I'm not indicting everybody. 
all I'm saying is, is that sharing is caring. And we're going to have to start doing some more caring and some more sharing the love and the love of God in, in order to be able to help them. How are we going to expect for them to work with us when we don't even take the time to work with them? Now, also, uh, 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 Chaplain Crosby, mamas, I'm a mama. I'm a mama. May's a mama. Doc is a daddy. I don't, you don't have enough money for your children to make it right for them. You can't give your children money to make it right for them. You can't be their friend. You gotta be a mama. You gotta be a daddy. We, that's what they're gonna remember. When they get grown, they got, they're not gonna remember the toys you bought them. They got, they're not gonna remember the clothes you bought them, but they're gonna remember the time that you spent with them. The love. The love, the that's love. right. The love that you gave the them. Exaltation. What, what did you say, Chaplain? Exaltation. Exaltation, yes. Feel good about themselves. Yes, and and we gotta stop saying, you're gonna be like, you ain't no good, you're gonna be like your right. daddy. Now, I ain't saying everybody saying that, but I done heard it before in my own ears. Right. Right. Are you gonna you're gonna have to stop saying you know you're just like your mama? No, they just like God made them to be. They are beautiful and people and unique. And God said when He made them, He said they were beautiful. But before we go any further, uh, we're gonna talk more about this. I just saw uh, Mr. Sherman come in eating his lunch, and we're glad to see you here today. All right, now he is a pillar of the community. Yeah, all right. Well, come on and listen. You might have to come over and say a little something. something. But uh, we're just so glad that you're here today, joining us uh, on assignment at the round table. Sister Meg uh, Chaplain Crosby, <laughs> we're just so glad that you all are here. We, uh, can we hey, bring Shelby, uh, are you Shelby on in, Doc? We're going to bring Shelby Alvarez in from uh, San Antonio, San Texas. San Antonio. Oh, sure. and Shelby. Shelby, are you with us? We're trying to push Shelby up now. He's on. Unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. And when you, before, while he's coming on, remember, guys, October the 22nd is Bill Blair Day. And so we're going to be at, at William Blair Jr. Park from 12 o'clock high noon to 6 o'clock p.m. We're going to be playing a memorable, a memorable baseball game. Amen. And this is what, Doc, is this our 12th, 8th or 12th year? We started in 2014. The, 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 the COVID, the pandemic. We started in 2014, and then after COVID came, we didn't have it for a couple of years. But, you know, they wanted everybody to stay in on lockdown. But we're back. Hey, Bill Blair Day. Yeah. Shelby, are you with us? October the 20th. Shelby? I can't and, hear you. Uh, we're going to have a, we've also had a, um, Lady Charles also donated uh, beef, hot dogs oh, for our children, about over 100 children. So we're asking if you want to be a part of this great memorable day, uh, Bill Blair Day, you want to donate some hot dog buns, some mustard, some juices for the children, just give us a call at 214-372-372. Six five zero zero. Shelby said he had uh, connection problems here. And we're having a little connection problems with Shelby Alvarez out of San Antonio, Texas. But May, we've got the uh, newspaper here also today. Oh yeah. We just gone over a plethora of things, guys. So we've got the newspaper, the elite newspaper, right here today. Shelby, you with us? And we want you to pick up your newspaper at the churches. Here. Uh, here at Lucas Cafeteria. And if you don't know where to pick up one, just give us a call at yeah. Healy News. And we'll tell you where to pick up your paper you to give you, we're giving you news that you can use. Okay, we're talking about good things in, in the communities. We're talking about uh, what what the happenings are in the community. So get stop and get your elite news. Now I tell you, we've got a event coming up after the 
Bill Blair Day, October the 22nd, we have the Women of Wisdom, which is November the 18th. 19th. That's the 19th at the DeSoto Civic Center. And these are some of the women, I'm gonna mention their names, but these are some of the women that are going to be inducted into the Women of Wisdom Hall of Fame. Oh yes. Oh, this is mighty right here. Oh yeah. And we have some women that are stellar, okay? And that are doing um, significant, pertinent things in the community, uh, vital things in the community. And I'm gonna give you some of their names. Oh, let me tell you, I guess speaker is gonna be that day. Tommy Black, who is the owner and proprietor of the Konoma Cigar Lounge, former Baylor football player and graduate. We congratulate you also. Thank you. We also will have Tisha Owens, the Project Identity. They will be there, Lala, Kendra, Tisha, Charity, China, and they are going to perform at the Women of Wisdom event November the 19th. Some of these women include today Gladys Lee, congratulations. Congratulations. Tamara Stephanie, congratulations. Dr. Shirley Higgs, congratulations. Nancy Mulder, congratulations. Pam Meyer, Congratulations, Myers. That's my sister right there. Uh, Linda Henderson, we love you with Henderson's Chicken. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Husama Rogers, congratulations. Oh, yes. Constable Tracy Gully, she don't play, step back, <laughs> don't mess with her. She's been inducted into the Women of Wisdom Hall of Fame. And we also have Mayor Rachel Proctor. I love this lady. Uh, congratulations, Rachel Proctor. Congratulations, Constable Tracy Gully. Oh, we yeah. thank you all. She and I, I, just, I just love Mayor uh, Rachel Proctor. A lot of my children went to uh, the daycare at their church at the House of Prayer, neighborhood House of Prayer on Ledbetter. That's going to take place at the DeSoto Civic Center Theater Room. Okay, you need me to come over? Okay, let's. We got to come over because we've been joined. Come on, girl. We're going to be joined. We're being joined by Lady Charles today. I don't have to. No, no, you, no, no, you're good, sister. Doc is going to get y'all straightened up so we can all be on. Um, I'll be on camera. We're going to even get a chance to squeeze Sherman Henderson in here. Mr. Sherman Henderson, as soon as we, uh, did I say Sherman Henderson? Sherman Henderson. No, it's not Henderson. <laughs> Sherman Robinson. Oh, he's just listening today. He's going to give us some corners. And you know what? I'm a big girl. I can always take corners, okay? But uh, we just want to simplify things. But Lady Charles is here today again with us. Oh, God, you can get her in the camera as well, though. Um, her church is called say, Surviving the, the Times. Are the tickets still available? Are the tickets still available? Yes, they are. Give the question again. Okay, the question is, oh, she's going to know because she this is good. The question is, we had a guest here last week, and uh, we were talking about something that was special going on in the community. Um, uh, it's a national event, and give me her name and just give me one thing that she said, and uh, the tickets are yours. And that is Felicia LaFall. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> My husband said he don't want to go to the fair, but I do. He don't want nobody stepping on his toes. He said they don't say they sorry. I said they don't even be seeing you. <laughs> you gotta wear boots. Yeah, he got to wear some steel toe boots. <laughs> But um, I know we already have had church today, guys, because uh, <laughs> Chaplain Crosby brought us in with prayer. But now we got uh, Lady Charles here with Surviving the Times mm -hmm. Ministry, and she's in Haslett, Texas, and which I think some people may call it Frisco, Texas. No, they call it Southland. Southland. 
Oh, they're by each other. Okay, so they give you the one where it's the biggest place. How many? What's the population in? Uh, is it uh, a ranch and Haslett? Haslett, Texas, has a small population. I would say we're probably on uh, five thousand people. Oh, that's good. Uh, if that, if that, and so uh, it's by South Lake, surrounding cities, Mono, uh huh, uh -huh. And those areas. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you're close to me. <laughs> Oh, no, you say Ron Oak, okay. Ron Oak. Ron Oak, okay. I was thinking about Long, Long Oak, okay. Two different places. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but we're going to also talk today about forgiveness. And uh, I was telling uh, Lady uh, Charles that I've heard and talked with some people that have been on their dying bed. And if, that, if the cure is forgiveness if we could just forgive you will be cured you know so we're going to talk about forgiveness today um in the community but uh let me just is he on your doc okay so let me just say this other thing what i was going to tell you guys earlier that a family member that we knew daughter had ran away had been gone since last thursday and so her parents were looking for her. Well, yesterday, Casey, uh, he went and helped him look for this young lady. Mm -hmm. And while they were out, they came up in a neighborhood over off of, uh, what street was that, Doc? Morel. Morel. And Walnut. And Walnut. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know that's, that's on hey, the bottom, I believe. Mean. That's close to the bottom in Dallas. So, uh, mm -hmm. They were looking for her. So when they got in the neighborhood, the police were there. A woman had called the police because she said there was a young man and a young lady in her backyard smoking marijuana. Smoking marijuana. Uh -huh. She called the police. Well, after they called the police, then my son said he went and told the policeman, say, look, I'm, a, I'm in the neighborhood. I'm scouting around trying to find this young lady. Just about that time, he spotted her. Her dad was there too. He was in another car. He bumped into him because he stopped so fast. And and anyway, so Doc got out of his car. He started chasing the young lady. Her dad got out of the car, and started chasing the young man. Mm. Doc said he ran. He said if she had to run another block, he wouldn't have made it. He said cause he chased her for two blocks. He said, "Mama, she fast." Real fast. But this child had left. And I don't, I don't know. There are some reasons why these children are leaving home. I don't, I don't know, but some of them just want to be grown, you know. And so I'm not, in, as again, I'm not indicting anyone. But Doc, that how can you tell me again where this house is? The lady said that these neighbors children were saying that uh, at, the corner, yes, at the corner of uh, Morrell and Walnut, that activity of kids skipping school all day, runaway kids all day. Or at the corner house of Walnut and Morel Street. Do you remember what color it was, Doc? No, but it had. I, I remember. Yeah, yeah. It was blue and yellow. Blue, blue and yellow. yellow, and it had uh, the windows were boarded up. Okay, blue actually, and yellow. Actually, it's not. You know, actually, it's not on the corner of Morel and uh, uh, Walnut. It's right behind No Limit Bells Bun. It's the house right oh. behind No Limit Bells Bun, but it's the next block is. Morel and Walnut. That's Reverend Corey Tony's uh, business right there at the uh, No Limit Bell Bonds. So that is, uh, yeah, that's at No Limit, but right behind No Limit Bell Bonds. I'm going to call Reverend Tony because I know he probably doesn't know this kind of action is going on over in that neighborhood because we want to be mindful and you know what we say. If you see something, say something. We need to, we need to help one another. You know, we don't know if they're on, in there on their own, uh, or someone has taken them there, you know, we don't know what they're using this house for. But we have to be mindful of these places boarded up. That's on uh, Morel and Walnut, Blue and Yellow House. Windows boarded up. Windows boarded up. But be careful now, abandoned house. So be careful. They're saying that's where a lot of children are being. Are going, you know, and Good school. Haven Apartments and the what? Good Haven Apartments and the Good Haven Apartments mm -hmm. as well too. 
Boy, I remember Tisha Horn used to be the manager over there many moons ago, and she had a tight ship. And they meant something over there, the managers there helping young people and helping the people in the community. So she's not there, God bless her soul. But we do want to be mindful of there are just a lot of things going on that we need some help, y'all. I don't know what we can do more, but we need some help. Hey, girl, come on in here. Come around this way. Donna just made it in, but we need some help. Uh -huh. Now, again, you want to come over to you, Casey? Casey's going to fix us up so Donna can come in here. Listen, it takes a village, guys. So we are here on assignment. Uh -huh. But we're doing it with prayer, Chaplain. Yes, we are. Chaplain Crosby. Yes, we're doing we it with prayer, Sister Donna Gassaway. Yeah. We're doing it with prayer, uh, Lady Charles. Hey, that's power in numbers. I tell you what, <laughs> Lady Charles. I'm like, I'm sitting here waiting. I'm just waiting. Lady Charles said last <laughs> week. <laughs> Say, Jesus born, Jesus was born of a woman. <laughs> She said, I don't know what this world be without women. <laughs> Powerful women. Yeah. Powerful women, praise God. Women that are doing what they need to do, being on assignment, being on assignment praise God. Yeah. Have we got Shelby yet, Doc? Okay, but if you don't call him, go ahead and pull that up. You do it. Go ahead and pull that up for uh, San Antonio, a restoration of San Antonio Church. When you came in here, I thought you were my niece, girl. You're like, you're about 25 years old. Well, that's good. Uh, 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 uh. Praise oh, God. That's, that's, hey, that's, you're living good. That's right. you drinking some of that Jesus juice like uh, yeah. Sister May Margaret Cross. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, again, um, we're, uh, I'm Deborah Blair Abram on assignment of Eli Newspaper. We are here at Luby's Cafeteria at the round table where we solving all the problems of the yes. world, the issues of the world. Yes. You know, there will always be problems, but the issues of the world, we are here to, on assignment, we got sleeves rolled up and uh, we need you also to be on assignment and be a part of uh, this village for our young people, for our mothers, you know, I look up to my mothers, the yes. mothers we have here, they got a, they've got a, a tough task out here. So we know that mamas, stay home. Stop trying to beat your girls out before they get to the club. Y'all go with them, which I, which I don't, 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 don't indict me. Cause I tell you, I wanted to, and I have to tell y'all a little secret, okay? I don't even know if Doc know this. But at one time, honey, I know. <laughs> At one time, they were saying, Mama, 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 Mama. They kept all of them, you know, because we got nine children, okay? So six of them were at home at one time. Then Mama, Mama. I looked at them. I said, Lord, I said, what if I put them in the garage and go to California and give me some white boots and a short skirt and be a go-go dancer? <laughs> I want to be a go-go dancer. <laughs> and I looked at my babies. I said, Lord, I said, can't Thank you. I can't do it. Can't do it. I have a responsibility. And uh, it's paid out, praise God. You know, we've had our ups and we've had our downs, but we've had more good than we've had bad. And I know these women can attest to that. Amen. That's right. Serving the law will pay out after a while. After a while, praise God. You know, and I like that what you said too, sister, because we have to know that when you, he said, when is the prayer answered? Uh, Mark 11 and 25, the prayer is answered then. Okay, but you got to wait. Be patient and wait on the Lord like Job. Daddy used to say that all the time. Dale, you got to have a little let that Job got. I used to say, what's that, daddy? He's talking about patience. <laughs> patience. So we got to have patience. But before we go any further, because uh, I want this sister to talk about. Uh, can you see Sister Don on that? Okay. Sister Donna Gassaway, welcome to the round table on assignment. Yes, thank you. I, I was telling them a little bit about you being a twin. 
your father being a twin. And these are these are some more pillows in the community. So tell us a little bit about your family. And then would you go in and tell us uh, something about the work that you're doing yes. in the community with our young people? I will, I will start off by talking about my dad. My dad uh, was an identical twin. His name was Dr. E.B. Gassaway, Dr. Reverend E.B. Gassaway, I'm sorry. And his twin brother was Dr. J.B. Dr. Reverend J.B. Gassaway. And both of them were third three degree Masons. And so they they uh, represented leadership for years. They represented leadership all of my life. And um, they instilled that in us. That our family represents leadership. You know? right. uh, we represent our change. All right. And so that was putting me to be a change. And so my motto is be a voice, be the change. And in 1998, God, uh, I received a calling from God to change the world. And I didn't really understand what that meant. I did I know now, literally 20 some years later, that that means through uh, organizations, through networking. Uh, right. being around beautiful women like yourself right. and we just sharing uh you know sharing the words sharing the gospel making a change making a difference right and just being a voice for our young generation so that we can reach back and pass the torch and keep it going and keep it moving and so that is that is one of my biggest inspirations um as well as me being a, a christian so uh my ministry over the past 30 years have been to be a voice and be a change and what i'm doing right now is currently making a difference in the lives of our young children through uh, truancy and dropout prevention. Right. I am currently now the International Association for Truancy and Dropout Prevention president. Uh, my uh, tenure was, will, will continue, it will actually conclude this time in October. I held it for three years as president, vice president for seven years. And so it has been a very interesting task because it was global. It put me in a, in a challenge, uh, and I was ready for the challenge. I believe that God equipped me 30 years ago for that challenge. And so what I learned with uh, in that experience was how to change the world, how to uh, walk in the calling that he gave me. And so it was just so fulfilling and awesome to me. My own personal experience is because of what I didn't understand 30 years ago. I'm actually living in it now. Wow. And it's all about having patience and uh, being able to persevere and endure it. And so uh, having that on my side, I never stopped. Didn't understand why I was treated the way I was treated, but didn't realize I was on a journey through God. And sometimes the journey gets tough. Sometimes the journey gets tough. And, and whatever accolades and uh, credentials that I have right now, I give it all to God. And I'm glad that he is with me because he continues to give me strength and it's renewed every day. Amen. So when I tell you that I wake up those old, broke down communities and to see what good is in it, that's yeah. the that person. And so what I'm doing right now is going into the shaded areas and trying to reach those students that are dropouts, right. those that are truant, uh, the parents that are not influencing our students to try to wake them up and get everybody on board because the whole goal is to build back better. And so we got to build up our students. We got to build up our students. Exactly. You know, we have to build up the uh, minority communities right. and let them know that we're here for a change and it will be a change. Yes, With this new generation. Be. They're all the ones with the change. They want to know about now what we say. They're the ones with the change. So we need to find those who can be that peer peer connection and they can help each other. Right. But so they need people like us. Right. You know, that uh, pat them on the back, encourage them, pick them up, and, and uh, shake them and reform them and put them back out there. So those that are dropping out, are they dropping out because it's unmet and unaddressed issues, mm -hmm. unmet needs? Uh -huh. And so that's what we have to put together, you know, our resources to see what that is and then make that change and make that difference and give them what they need. Right. We may not we may not be able to save everybody, but if you can just save one, one exactly. it can be a domino effect. Praise God. Yes, yes, that's awesome. Well let me let me ask you this when you go out and, and uh with at the young people, are you knocking on the doors? Do you all have to arrest them and put handcuffs on them and all of that or how do, how does that work? Well I would say what that looks like is you're right. Okay. Um, I work in a school district where I work with that daily over the course of uh, probably 12 to 15 years and working with the students. Mm -hmm. And because they're already there, we come up off of a COVID 19 you know, pandemic when the world shut down in 2020. You know, that left us actually we're living in the results now of the COVID 19. Right. So, whatever exactly. those results are, that's what we're living in now. Uh, students that, you know, parents that could have died of COVID 19. Right. Uh, students that are struggling right now with mental health. Or I would say it's on, mental health is on a rise and it's even yes. more in a devastating situation. Yes. Because in, in the minority communities, we don't believe and we don't get support and we don't um, 
know how to navigate through what it looks like for mental health, so you can identify it. And if we don't know that, we're not going to be able to uh, follow through to support our families and our loved ones. We, we would be in denial. So to avoid that, we have to bring in the resources. We have to bring in the right people to start at least the conversation. Okay. We have right. to at least start the conversation and what Amen. mental illness looks like. Amen. And uh, know what the process is because some of my experience is working with uh, some parents when a student have a meltdown, they have to go get an assessment. The parents don't understand. They just hear the child crying. Mom, come get me, but mom, you can't. They have to stay and get assessed so that they can get properly diagnosed and they will get the medicine they need so they can be, you know, sustainable uh, citizens and, uh, and live their life productive. But if we inter interfere, intervene in that uh, process, then they complete and you're back to draw board no one. So if we can just understand the process, bring in the resources to educate our parents, to educate our families, Right. Educate our students, what does that look like on the mental health side? So when you talk about dropout prevention and even truancy, that whole vision of what it looks like is help. Mm. Help is needed. Unmet right. needs. Unaddressed issues. Mm -hmm. SOS, unaddressed issues, exactly. And that's what we're here for. We're just not talking about the issues. We're not just talking about the problems. We are here for solutions. These women that are here today, we have solutions. You give us a call and we can get back with you because this is not just something that can just happen just like right now. But God said that the prayer, when the prayer is prayer, it's already done. But we just got to believe. We got to believe the word. And when we believe the word, it will come, come back. And sometimes, you know, I have found out, sisters, that sometimes when it doesn't get come your way like you think it should be yeah. might be the best thing for you yes because it's happened to me quite a few times and i'm like oh, oh okay <laughs> but i really thought i was right you know yeah. i had the right idea you know but that's not the way it always is so i know that you're gonna um uh, are there some numbers? Are they just going to call us through me and then we can just find out about what they can do to help their young people? Yes, definitely, definitely. We can reach out to you and, uh, and let me know. Okay, okay. We're certainly glad that you came here today, uh, yeah. Sister uh, Donna Gassaway. Uh, you're powerful. Yes, very powerful. You're very powerful, and we need women like you. All that Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise 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 God. And Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what I like. Yeah. Uh, the Lord wants us to, he wants us to tell you that we don't do this on our own. It's not by osmosis. We can't do anything in and of ourselves without the Lord. So that's yes. why we're here today, because he has been the wings beneath, uh, the wind beneath our wings, you know, pressing us on, you know, pressing yes. us toward the higher calling of what we need to do. And again, as I said earlier, you know, we are pro people. But my dad, like I said, and what I'm doing and what they're doing, we start at home. Start at home, spread abroad, abroad. Yes. You know, so we got Mr. Sherman Roberts here today. He talks about, um, uh, he was here last week. This man has done many, many things in the community. Oh, yes. And um, we're going to have to get him out here so he can talk about how these young men can do this too. But you gotta be focused, you know, we gotta be focused, uh, parents uh, with our children, you know, we just gonna have to stop and take the time with them. What do you say? Okay, we just gonna have to stop and take the time. So women and sons as much, uh, this is here, we're here for you. It takes a village to raise each other. It does. It does. What's the question, uh, Mr. Well, yeah. When it comes to truancy, when we work in the school system, it is the campuses. It's the it school. Is the school. It's the school. They refer the students because the students are there. And when they're not in school, we have a process called the Texas Compulsory Attendance Law. It's a process called the Truancy Prevention Measures. And in those measures, when a student is three days or four days, within a four week period, they have to, uh, it is by the law that the district is responsible for contacting that parent to write. Right. We send out a three day warning letter. We used to run a trusted program and we got referrals from the county when uh, the judge had ruled on yes. in, in order for them to have a restitution, they were in the choice program in the heat. And they got back to school. And we were funded by the county. Okay. Yeah, so it's hard to do so 
want to see us not funded some kind of way. Yeah, and yeah, that was yeah. one way to get the funding yeah. for the school. You know, you got them back in the school, the school district, but they were referred and they went to court. That was so long ago. Was that referred by They were referred by Daddy! Oh, no, uh, Mr. Roberts, Brother Roberts, that is one of the things that Daryl was talking about last week. Again, we're here at the newspaper. Deborah Blair Abram on assignment here at the round table with Chaplain Crosby, Lady Charles, and Sister Donna Gassaway. And I remember Daryl saying last week that Mr. Roberts used to have a program for young people that were uh, in trouble or either they, had, they went to prison. Uh, ex offenders uh, uh, Yes, exactly. And he had a program. Now, that program has been canceled out. We got to get that back. We've got to get that back. It's going to take some money, and that's what we're going to need. And I guess I'll learn more about that so that we'll know how to direct each other on working on these type of programs. You know. Right. And, well, I wanted to just make one comment without getting ugly. Sure. Uh, we're what, talking about the community leaders you have in here, uh, $1.5 billion. That oh, yeah. City. Those kind of programs need to be funded for the city. We, we're, they want our vote. This is what they're asking us to do with the vote. Thank and you. And they're talking about racial equity programs they put together. They're not talking about set aside for a minority conflict. We're talking a lot of money. Turned down a convention center. I've been into those meetings. It's a lot of money. We're not included in those meetings. We're not at the table. You know, they only no. have a few of us at the table that's speaking for all of us, mm -hmm. and they're getting the money. But when you're talking about 1.5 billion, and uh -huh. everybody here's our time to get jobs. Uh -huh. We don't want to just be, get jobs, we want to be able to give the job. Exactly. So we want to be in control where we can get the jobs. And when you start talking like this, they come out telling you. But this is a lot of money when they're talking about Fairport, they're talking about the convention center, they want us to vote for it. And I think we should vote for it. But what are you going to give us? For, for our vote, because 1.5 million, you know how much that is? That's a lot of money. A lot of money. And, and, and when it comes to the minority contractors, right now we got one, we got 24.5 million blacks in this city, and we got less than 1% minority contracts come from the city. And so we got to push that. And now I'm going to keep pushing that. Thank and I'm you. I'm a contractor, and that's why I got to talk to that. But truancy, back in the day, we used to work with that. Our referrals came from Dallas County and that program, and they cut out all of the good programs. And we work with those truancy kids with the workforce, with the workforce now. Colleges, got, they got them. So you got to look at follow the money. We always talk about follow the money. You start following the money, and they don't take long to follow. Them. You can be online and follow what the city council passed out and all of that. We are not just, we're, we're consumers now. We're back to consumer, you know, and it used to be where we were. Right, now, exactly. We're back to consumer. We're consumers, but we gotta, we gotta do something with that money that we have. We can't just put the money in our pocket and let it spoil. Well, we're not, you know. Well, what I'm saying is, we're consumers. We're not getting the money. Right. We're not getting the oh, okay. opportunity. We're not, and you can't tell me with all these big buildings and everything going on, they're not educated enough. Right. They can do that. I'm talking about younger. That knows how to do that. But when it comes to Dallas, Dallas is still, you know, right, you know, right. Mm -hmm. And so they make sure we can. Well, you got some young professionals going to school, getting out of college, and, and but they pick and choose who they want to give a few dollars to. All right, all right, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. I, you know, it, you were compelled to say that. You know, so it wasn't by mistake that you were here. You know, this divine intervention. Amen. But I want to say that, and thank you, uh, Brother Roberts, for saying that, because that was one of the things. I get carried away with everything. I'm just excited about everything. I don't care what it is. But the vote, we got a vote November the 8th. We need your vote, young people. You got, I think, 10 more days up to October the 11th to get your voters registration. I was saying last week that no one has come by the office and picked up a registration, but I'm not indicting anybody. You may already have yours. So give us a call or, you know, let us know. I've got my voters registration and I voted. Now the early voting begins October the 24th, I believe. 
I think it's October the 24th. That's my daughter's birthday. <laughs> and uh, it is November the 4th. But the voting is November the 8th. If you don't, don't tell me, don't talk about it if you didn't vote because you're not a part of the process. But I had to pull this up this morning because even Solomon talked about voting. Daniel talked about voting. We have to be a part of the process or be nothing at all. So we, we're not one by ourselves. We are all together. We are village. We need you. We need you guys to come out. It's not about the Republicans. It's not about the Democrats. It's not about the naysayer. It's, it's about a, a get coming together. It's about a process. I say that if your people, if you're the one that you voted for, if they don't lose, but they will know that you are in business, even if you lost by five points. Now, when you vote for these elected officials, then we have to keep them accountable. They need us to let them know what they're doing, what they need to do, send letters and talk to your congressmen in your community, in your, in your region. Hey, Daryl, Daryl Blair just walked in, I'm uh, CEO of um, uh, Elite News. Yeah, and you can say that again, when we elect them, we have to have them accountable. We have to have them accountable. Because this is very important, it's in your paper. Yes. You know, they want you to vote, but they're not telling you how they're gonna spend money. And the programs they talk about youth and all of that, they most cities have programs for them. Okay. You know, and, and Dallas should talk about money for youth in this in this city. Well, Mr. Roberts, what we voted for, right? Okay. Well, the Bible tells us to seek to for you to seek out, read, read about which one. No, hey, listen, nobody's perfect, but you seek the better party for you, the better person who you want to vote for. But vote. That's yeah. what's that's oh, what's important. Yeah. Vote. Vote. Read. Oh, we oh we sure do need to read. Not like to read as a black. No, we don't. I'm kind of we need to read. Charlotte that myself sometimes. But I'm telling you, <laughs> hey, look, okay, I said it. You know, dad used to say, Yeah, we just read, okay? Yeah. So I'm just gonna say it, you know, we need to do that. And I do that more as we go. And also I have Shelby on the line uh, out of uh, San Antonio, Texas. Doc, can he can they hear yes. Shelby? Yes. Shelby, can you hear us? Yes, we just find Shelby. This is Shelby Alvarez with Restoration Ministries, San Antonio Church. And Shelby's going to give us some information about programs that they have. A nine I'm going to let you tell the Shelby, okay? Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody. Hi. Hi. Oh, 
accountable uh, leaders for their community that once they graduate our nine-month process, um, that they can uh, go on and, and back into the community uh, and be successful uh, in whatever endeavor that they uh, find themselves in. You know, uh, you know. Also, through the nine-month program, we offer a uh, transitional phase for anybody that wants to stay connected to the ministry. Um, uh, you know, something a really they stay, stay under the covering. Um, they can uh, work their own job. They can save up money. Um, you know, we teach them how to budget their money. Teach them how to, you know, manage their finances um, so that they can be that much more, uh, you know, uh, ready and effective. So once they do leave. Um, you know, but so for me, for my case, uh, is uh, I'm going through the, uh, the the leadership training to uh, to become an ordained minister, to become a pastor myself, uh, and follow in the footsteps of my spiritual father, um, and, and help God's people that way. And so this it, is it's, it's been quite a journey, and, and this has been such a blessing, not just in my life, but to uh, those that God has placed around me. Uh, I've literally seen God's hand move in my life. Uh, from somebody who thought, you know, I, with all honesty, I thought I was going to die uh, in my drug addiction. I thought I was going to die in my mess. I thought, you know, I thought that was all that my life was going to be about, just living right below um, my potential. And now somebody that, you know, um, you know, of course, by God's power, um, somebody that people can now depend on and rely on. Um, and... Um, be the leader that uh, my family needs me to be. The rules have completely reversed. So uh, God is good. God is good. And he's moving uh, through this ministry, uh, through the city. Amen. 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 Uh, also, uh, I want to say that this program also, if someone needs to uh, to go to San Antonio or to Oklahoma or to Tennessee, you know, this program will send for you to help you, they will make sure that if you have uh, any legal, as a uh, brother uh, 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 Shelby was saying, you have any legal issues, uh, you need to go to the hospital or whatever, they will be there for you or go to court. Just give them a call. Shelby, give them that number, please. Yes, yes, Nine, two, three, four, and, and, and thank you, Mrs. Abrams. Just as, as uh, she was saying, uh, we're a type of ministry, we're a type of uh, outreach, which is 24 7. And uh, so, any, any time of the day, any time of the night, uh, whatever your situation is, whoever you are, wherever condition you may be in, we will be there to pick you up. We'll be there to uh, have our doors open to receive you in. And, and, and one of the greatest parts about it, Mrs. Abrams, is that it's completely free. No charge. Uh, matter of fact, I believe this this may be one of the only programs in this city, uh, or if uh, very very few, that take people in without money, without identification, uh, without anything. You know, all you have to have is a desire to want to change your life. Amen. Uh, and we'll be there. Amen. Thank you, Shelby, so much. This gentleman that's speaking right now is uh, Shelby Alvarez out of Restoration Ministry, San Antonio Church. The pastor there is Pastor Mark Blair and co and Pastor uh, Lady Gloria Blair. We love you guys. You're doing a great work, and we thank you for that. Our program is already about to come to a uh, to a uh, end, but we're gonna let uh, you want to say something, Daryl? Yeah, let Lady Charles. Lady Charles is gonna close us out in prayer. Uh, I want to thank um, Sister Donna Gassaway for being here today. Uh, she will be back. Will you be back? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. We're working together. Uh, Lady Charles will be back. She's going to uh, lead us in prayer. Uh, chaplain, deacon, secretary, and all that, and a bag of chips, and a big bag of chips. Uh, chaplain Crosby will be here. Thank you so much, Sherman Roberts, for your insight and your input and we want to be a part of these programs so we can all work together. This is not by mistake. I want to let my brother come in, Daryl, and say something to the community today. Come on over here, Daryl. We've already talked about the women of wisdom because we got to pray. So <laughs> we just show the pictures again. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me. Okay, let me move. Okay, let Daryl come on in. Why don't y'all just go over? Let Daryl come on over. 
And then we'll move back with Daryl Lee. How about that? Yeah, that was good like that. Who did? Lady Charles. Uh, Lady Charles. I got time. I got time. Yeah, we got this. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Oh, you want to say something? Oh, okay. Well, let you go ahead and say something. Come on over here, Lady. We always will well, be aware that we can speak when, he, when, when it needs to be spoken. Thank you, Daryl. I didn't know that. Oh, we're going to run a little bit over. Yeah, we are running uh, a little bit late, over. And let me apologize, but I do want to thank. Can you Ooh. see him? Ooh. I want to thank my sister, Deborah, for her diligence and her hard work as she pours into this program and put this together. This is her idea to bring father, my dad's round table back. I was simply going to come have lunch and invite Phil over. But this is something that my sister, Deborah, embarked upon, and I certainly want to appreciate and love on her for her diligence with this. Um, Lady Charles, you had something to say, and I'm going to say something, you're going to pray to pray us out. Yeah, okay. well, first of all, I just want to thank God for the leap news to where I have had the wonderful experience of being on the front cover and in the newspaper. Uh, we truly thank God for everyone that's really is sitting at the table today, uh, for their uh, Blair, uh, such an awesome owner of this Dallas Elite News. We thank God for Deborah Blair and for our chaplain and for uh, the Donna today we had talking about truancy, our children, as well as our guest today, yes. which is That's Sherman, Sherman, Roberts. Sherman Roberts. And I tell you, this is just a awesome and a unique experience yes, it is. of being here with Elite News. So I'm just going to say you do not have an ad in Elite News. Come on now. Get in here. Get your ad in here. Put your name in here. Come out and support Elite News. The program. We always need more information. Of yes. And, um, the, and the podcast. We need you here too. And the sign. Amen. Yes. Every yes. Tuesday Thank from you, 12 to 1. Come out and be with us. We certainly want your support. We certainly thank you for those that have been supporting us. And we thank God for Sister Daryl to yeah. be able to have this available for us, for yeah. you to get the news, the information, yeah. and to have folks to come on to pour into us as we pour out into you. Yeah. Uh, just really quick, uh, I noticed that Deborah talked about uh, unforgiveness. Yeah. yeah, And I just wanted to touch really quick on that, on the unforgiveness. I can't go long, but... I wanted to put something with that. My title, I wanted to say to you today, if God is so good, why do I hurt so bad? Mm. And when yeah. we talk about unforgiveness, it made me think that all around us, people are in pain. And they are in pain emotionally, physically they're in pain, spiritually they're in pain, but whatever the source is pain. And is your pain unforgiveness? Yes. Deborah said, and we all know this, unforgiveness causes sickness. Yes, unforgiveness does. causes us to be bitter. Yep. Unforgiveness calls us, us not to operate in our right minds. When we hold unforgiveness, we be nasty. We have attitudes. Mm -hmm. We sit up in church like we got sour lemons in our mouth. <laughs> we cut up when we are bitter and holding unforgiveness. And we don't act openly as we should as men and women of God. Yes. yes. And so I wanted to just tell you today, let it go. Let it go. God, allow yourself to be bound with unforgiveness. I was taught this. God is not really looking at what folks do to me, but he's looking at how I respond to this. That's right. How I'm responding to the situation. And so I want to encourage you today, stop allowing folks to get you out of your position. Stop allowing folks to change who you are. Yes. Stop allowing folks to cause you to act a fool yes. when you don't even have to. Because vengeance belongs to the Lord. Sure does. Give it to him and let God take the care of those that hold unforgiveness and judge you. The Bible told us to judge you not. At least you be judged. I don't have time to judge, point fingers. I don't, because my thing is this. The enemy is trying to kill you every day and every second of your life. Right. And you are wasting too much energy holding unforgiveness, fighting with folks, being ignorant, acting unsure, too much in it. So what do we have to do? We have to start relaxing. Ah, we got to sit back, allow folks to do what they want to do, but keep yourself in position for the Holy Spirit to operate through you. 
See, you got to know your value. And when you know your value as a man and as a woman, yes. first of all, you're not going to allow it to grip you and hold That's you right. in that capacity. That's right. Because you know your value. So I leave this as Mr. Blair come right Amen. behind me. Know your value as a woman. Yes. Know your value as a man. Yes. And quit allowing folks to move you out of position. Read. We as black folks need to read. We need to be up on what's going on in our society, in our communities. Read your paper. Don't just read your Bible, but you don't read your paper. You don't read what's going on in the community. You're not reading the news. You're not reading what, what laws about to take place. When you go to vote, don't get on there and just be marking. You better know who you picking That's and choosing. Right. That's right. Because God will hold you accountable for the people that you choose and put That's in right. office right. that is not going to be good for your communities, your cities, and your state. All right. It is important that you read and that you educate yourself. If you don't say something, they'll run over us and treat us like dogs. And you know, and I know, we're not a dog. Say something. Vote. Stand up for what's right. And know your <laughs> mind. Go ahead. All right, then. Are you sure? Amen. <laughs> Are you right about it? Are you right? Is she right, right, right about it? Is she right about it? Are you sure? Yes. Be for certain. Yeah. Be on the right plane. Yeah. Forgive yourself. <laughs> Amen. 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 I certainly want to thank you all for viewing today. And uh, I just wanted to add a tidbit to some things that my sister described or expressed uh, within this broadcast or this podcast. Uh, she spoke about voting and she talked about holding uh, elected officials accountable. So often in our society and, and not just in Dallas, but around, uh, it just so happens that Dallas is the ninth largest city in America with the most African-American leadership, not only elected, but appointed. Wow. And uh, we happen to be the most inefficient. I said that. And that speaks volume to the city council, to the commissioner's court, to the courthouse, and to anybody else in leadership position who does not have a connective route with their constituents and those other elected officials. Just because that's not your district don't mean you don't get involved right. because your constituents cross over. We interact and intermingle on a daily basis. So it's really tragic that somebody will come become territorial when something has to be a group collective. Think about that. You know, and then she talked about forgiveness and bitterness and things of that nature. It's rather uh, tragic that someone would live their life that way. But, you know, there are those who have come accustomed to living their life that way. Right. That's how they live their life. You know, yeah. they don't make an adjustment and deal with the situation. They learn to live with the situation. That's their way of life from when they wake up to when they go to bed. Anything they deal with is that problem is already intertwined. Whether you bring them something totally outside of what's going on they always have to intermingle that problem because they've learned to deal with right. the problem. Right. They've learned to live with the problem that they are that they should be dealing with and then moving on. Right. So, right. you know, my father often told me, he said, Darryl, you can't undo a person quicker than they can undo themselves. That's right. Might not happen in your time, son, but it's going to happen. Yeah. Now, as we speak about elected officials, let's be candid about this. You got elected officials that you conveniently go and collect, elect them because you know their name, because you've seen them. Because they, they, you know, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're on Twitter. And uh, they go, you go to events and they're there. But they're not where you are. They're at the events because they're behind the ropes. They become elected, they become elected celebrities, VIP. They, when they become elected, before they get elected, they, they're amongst you. They're right there, they're relative, tangible, touchable. You can talk to them. And then when they get elected, they become VIPs. They got to go behind the rope. They got to go over here. They can only pop in for 15 minutes. You got an hour long program. They want to go to the top. They want to come in five minutes late and leave 45 minutes early. This is how I pro, this is how it happens. And we have to quit bannering and pandering to that. You got to hold them accountable and take them tangible issues that are relative in your community right. and make them answer to them. Right. That's our problem. You know, we, we too convenient. We got people been sitting in elected officials position. 20 and 30 years and what is the status change it is the status quo we've continued to deal with those things i i want to hold them accountable with this newspaper i'm you know my father also said he said this he said hey daryl there are no permanent friends there are no permanent enemies there are only permanent issues, son, with this newspaper. And so I've learned that I'm jumping back and forth. I'm going back and forth across the boundaries because some of my friends I've had to go in on. Yes, and some of my enemies, I've had to applaud them for their efforts. 
I can't say that there's a whole lot of applause out there because our communities are still struggling. Sherman, you brought something to my attention that I didn't pay attention to, and that was a caveat. We're going to close. But you talked about that $1.5 billion that the city of Dallas wants in a Prop 8. They want to come to you and ask for your uh, carte blanche and your pass and your vote. But where are the set-asides for our communities? Right. How do we benefit directly from this as opposed to the cosmetics of what's going on? How do we deal with the issues at hand right. within our community? Program, reentry programs funded and things of that nature. So I, I want that to be recognized and understood, and I'm going to address that. Also, we're going to put a, an endorsement slate out in the newspaper. And for those we don't endorse, what I'm going to do is paint the picture that some of these people are just running for office so they can collect a, collect a, a, a consultant fees so they can go pay their bills. Yeah, let me tell you how the game goes. They run for public office. They know they're not going to win. They don't campaign. They don't spend no money on their campaign. They put a couple of signs out. If signs don't vote, people do. So know that much. And then when they do it, they turn around and go look at their campaign fund. They write all that money out their campaign fund and consultants fees. So in miscellaneous uh, dollars so they can go pay their bills. Then you've helped somebody sustain. If you think, Deborah, you don't want me to do it. <laughs> no, I don't. I all don't right. do it. Don't all right. Do it. Do it. Wayne no, Carraway no, was no. a mouse daddy. No, and they no. got others. And I'm going to point them out in our newspaper because right. you got to stop spending time on people who are not valid candidates. So having said that, I'm Daryl Blair. I own that. I said that. Hold me accountable. 3155 South Lancaster Suite 240. I'm there from 10 to 4. You can come get me there. Call me on the phone and I'll meet you. God bless you and God keep this. My prayer for Elite News. Well, listen, my, and for everyone else, my vote is for Daryl Blair. Okay, but he can't do anything if he runs for a political office. I need, we need, this is what we got. Well, we're going to talk right here. This is our talking right here. We see something, we say something, you know. So again, as we come here today, the last voice that you're here today will be uh, Lady Chaplin. I mean, Lady, Lady, Lady Charles, Master Charles. Master Lady Charles. Uh, I want to thank again, Chaplin Crosby for being here, supporting me. Oh, oh, don't forget to check out, guys. The Sports Den in the Elite Newspaper on page 10. And you can go online at www.elitenewsdallas.com, okay, and check it out. Uh, they've got all the latest scores. I want to thank Lady Charles. I want to thank Sister Donna, uh, Donna Gassaway, Lady Chap, uh, Lady Cross, up here, Chapter Cross, Brother uh, uh, Rock, Sherman Roberts, Casey, our producer. You do a fabulous job. Thank you. Citywide, uh, Citywide Community, Community Citywide. Development Corporation. That's one of our sponsors. Thank you, Sherman Roberts. Amen. Robert. All right. All right. Hi. Sherry Blair is in the house. Yeah. We love you. Uh, and Daryl, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pray out, you know. Y'all know what we're gonna do. Nobody told me what what uh if nobody gave me the answer, so we're gonna save these tickets for next week, the fair tickets, okay? So you didn't answer the question. I'm gonna ask that same question again. I mean, give it to him one more time. time. Give it to him the question. Okay, the question was the guests that we had last week was here, and why were they here, and what did they say? Just tell me one thing that they said. Let me show them to them. These are the tickets. <laughs> okay, and we love you guys, and uh, thank you so much for being here today. We'll see you. Say hey, what ticket? What they get, two, they get two tickets. Two tickets. Thank you, Miss Blair. They get two tickets. So if you see something, say something. As Daryl says, get it on your mind. They like news. Thank you, ladies. And we're out. See you next Tuesday, 12 o'clock, high noon to 1 o'clock, and we're over. We love you guys. Thank you, Shelby, and thank you, Restoration Ministry, San Antonio Church. We love you guys. Get it on your mind. That's crazy. She's going to pray. No, she's praying. There are talking. No, 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 you're praying. Come on. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, today for this wonderful meetings that we have had. We thank you, Lord, for elite news. Father, we just thank you for your presence at this table. Yes, Father, we thank you for the podcast, and we thank you for the doors that you're about to open. Yes, Lord. Father, pour out on us and rain. Every family that's represented here, touch, 
heal, bless, and deliver in the name of Jesus. Every listener, Father, we pray that you minister to their hearts, their minds, and their spirits. Keep us encouraged, Father. But Lord, keep us educated. Father, help us to vote. Push us and put it in our spirit. Yes. But Father, help us to read and know what we're reading, know what we're signing up for, and know what we're voting for. Yes. Father, help our people that we be not destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Yes. Father, yes. help us not to be ignorant, Lord, but help us to have wisdom as you have told us that we can have. Yes, Lord. Touch us now. We need you like never before. Lord, we need you in our communities, our cities, our states. We are in trouble, yes. but we serve a God that deals with trouble. Yes, you Lord. sit on high and look low. Hallelujah. Yes. You can break yokes. Yes. You can change laws. Yes. Yes. Father, you can give us victory where they said that we would not be victorious. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, Lord. I pray right now, Lord God, hallelujah, that you move by your power and your spirit. Each and every one of us got individual needs. Meet the needs, Father. Shake it up. Break the yoke, God. All healing, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Rebuke the devout. Counsel the assignments of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Through the finances, through the paper, through systems, and through laws. Counsel it now, Lord. Through the God that can do it. We stand up on you. We trust in you. We need and we depend end up on glory. Father, I pray right now for Deborah. Yes, Lord, she's you, Lord. guiding and leading this, Lord. Lord. I'm praying that you give her directions thank like you, never Father before, God. Lord. Yes. I pray that you will orchestrate her I'm every Stephen, move Lord. in the I'm name Stephen. of Jesus. I pray Jesus. for Blair, Lord God. I pray for him and, yes. and what he's about to encounter and come up on. Yes, I pray Lord that God. you give him wisdom as he walks. Every yes. step that yes. he takes, yes. I will shock yes, that you Lord. order it, God, Lord. because elite news is going to the next level. Yes, in Lord, the name Lord, of God. Jesus, yes, and we take you in advance for the next level. Let's break you for a neat news. Hallelujah. There wouldn't be a good man had he not had a good woman by his yes, side. Lord, Bless his wife. Touch Bless his wife. Lord, and she Lord, continue Lord. to be his help. Me strengthen yes, her, oh God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Name of Can Jesus. you walk together and shut their agree. They agree with a neat news. They agree to move and make changes yes, in the community. Yes. And we thank you for it. For the press down, the shaking the belly, and the running over. <laughs> yes, so in Jesus' in name, we pray. Thank God. Every listener, every person that is watching, be blessed. Know that God loves you, and elite news do too. Amen. Hallelujah. Be nice.